Hi everybody and welcome back to Sinclair's online video series about aviation. I'm Josh Sprague and today we rejoin you where we left you off last week on the first floor of Building 13 at Sinclair's downtown Dayton campus. Now last week we took a look at flight simulators and if you're interested in checking out that video and you missed it, feel free to look that up here on Sinclair's Facebook page. Today we're going to take a look at a different facet of aviation which is equally fascinating. Unmanned Aerial Systems, or UAS. Hello. I'm Todd Simpson. I'm with Sinclair Community College, and I'm the program manager of our Unmanned Aerial Systems program here at the college. UAS, or drones, if you will, are going to be very uh, significant in the upcoming future. They're going to be ubiquitous, and they're going to be in society as a, as a whole. They're rapidly approaching that point now. Uh, in the next 10 to 15 years, you're going to see uh, integration of UAS into almost every facet of our lives, in public and private. Now, you may not be familiar with the term UAS, but you probably have heard of it in some capacity. If you've seen things in the news about drones, if you know somebody who's got a drone, if you've operated one yourself, anything to do with that, you've heard of unmanned aerial systems. It's a very interesting and dynamic field to be involved with at this time. It's going to be, the, it's going to provide the most uh, uh, impactful change to our national airspace that's taken place in our lifetime, integrating these unmanned systems into the national airspace. So at Sinclair, we're trying to focus on getting sure, making sure that people understand how to do what they want to do if they're going to be in this industry. Safety, uh, intelligence about the systems, the sensors, the collections of the, the devices, uh, and the information from the field. Um, basically, we're here to educate the public and students about how to use these things properly, safely, and how to integrate them into our society. Now, what goes into an unmanned aerial system? Well, you've got the drone, or as they're technically called, unmanned aerial vehicles. You've got the operator, that's you or whoever's flying it, and you've also got a communication system with which to navigate. When you have all three of those things to come together, you've got the UAS. You know, there's a variety of different ways you can kind of work yourself into this field. And a lot of people think about wanting to be a pilot themselves, but there's so many other aspects to this industry besides just being a pilot, from designing sensors to doing maintenance to uh, doing research about what's going to be collected to analyzing the data once it's collected. So there's many different roles beyond just the pilot operator role in addition that's related to this industry and this field. Now UAS sounds like a technology that's fairly new and to some extent it is. However, what's really fascinating about it is it's a technology that's been around for more than 150 years. It can be traced clear back to 1849 when the Austrian military used unmanned balloons to drop bombs on Venice. As time moved forward, so did the technology. The Kettering Bug was an early form of aerial torpedo. It was developed by the Dayton Wright Company right here in Dayton, and it was the forerunner for a number of UAS technologies which would come out in the future. Flying is just one small aspect of the overall, you know, if you really want to do this for a career, you have to have skills beyond just flying. You know, it's like anything else, the more you know, the better equipped you are to handle what you're trying to do. Uh, so flying is one skill, but you have to have uh, computer skills, you have to have technical skills, you have to have a safety, you know, protocols in the back of your head, knowing what to do if something goes wrong. It's, it's, more, it's, it's just more than just getting the thing up in the air and going, hey, look. And usually when you're flying for fun, it's real easy because you can just go up and do whatever you want freestyle. But if you're going up and you're flying, you have a specific task, like you're inspecting something, you're looking at something, you're trying to take video or a snapshot of something that's got to be close and the right scale. And there, there's more to it. There's planning, there's pre-planning, there's post-processing that has to happen. Once the imagery is collected, we have to come back and process it. So there's a wide variety of, variety of skills that we employ when we fly drones or beyond just the stick and rudder skills to get the aircraft in the air. But that's part of what we try to do here is provide a comprehensive base, whether it's a short-term certificate or intermediate or a two-year associate degree. Um, you know, the comprehensive knowledge base is what we shoot. So there's standards and regs, there's operations, there's maintenance training, there's a law, you know, introduced as well. Uh, the idea behind the program is that we make a comprehensive pilot operator that can go out there and perform their job well, not make any mistakes and be proud of what they do as opposed to being in the news themselves by doing something wrong and causing a problem. 